My name is Jordy Murphy, and I'm the director of iMental Health Counseling, and I am also a registered provisional psychologist, and I work with individuals, couples, and teens. Have you ever had it where you feel like you can't open up? Or maybe you are venting on social media, you've just had enough, and you're kind of like, okay, you know what? Nobody's listening to me, so I'm just going to like spew it all out. And so then you do it, and then you expect people to validate you, and all of a sudden you get all these insensitive comments. Maybe you get a left field comment from a friend from 10 years ago, and you're like, okay, what the heck? Maybe people don't actually think the way I do, or they really don't care. And so where do we put where do we put the boundary around what we share with others and even 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 our own feelings what are our boundaries around emotional health and wellness for ourselves so even with emotional boundaries just like every other boundary that we're going to look at we have those boundaries that we set for ourselves and so even so which that means that the emotional boundary that we set for ourselves how are we going to even manage emotions how are we going to handle it when we feel upset that's a personal boundary that we're setting for ourselves that is so if i'm feeling sad how am i dealing with that emotion i have lots of people who come uh, for counseling and they feel sad and they go well you know what I, I know I just need to suck it up or everything happens for a reason. So I know I can't be sad too long. But the danger in that is that we're not actually dealing with our emotions. We're not act actually acknowledging that we're sad. In this time of the pandemic, there's lots of people feeling, feeling sad, feeling the grief, feeling loss but they're not acknowledging those feelings. So what kinds of boundaries can we start putting around that? How do you want to live in regards to setting some of those emotional boundaries? And so this is where we really have to think, you know, number one, what are some healthy, what are some unhealthy ways that you're thinking about your own emotions? What are your patterns of, of dealing with your emotions, your emotional state, even when you're on social media? Um, I keep on bringing up social media because I believe, well, we see that this is a lot of the place, a lot of the places where we're actually spending a lot of our time. And so we really have to think about, okay, what's the, what's the boundary that I need to set on, on my own emotional health that when I do share things, if I'm sharing them out into the world with people I don't necessarily have close relationships with, then am I just going to end up being hurt? So many people, when they're setting emotional boundaries, they, they may just say, you know what? I'm not going to share my emotions with anybody because I've been hurt. There's also some people who are like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care about other people. I just care about getting it out there. And so then they'll spew it, all kinds of things out on towards everybody on social media and get angry or whatever that is, right? But that's not, it's not leading them to the person that they want to be. So when we're talking about emotional boundaries or any of these boundaries that we're going through, something to consider is thinking about who do you want to be? Who do you want to be in regards to how you handle your emotional boundaries? Are you, are you moving towards the person you want to be? Or are you moving away? Do you have some hurt that might be there that's 
not allowing you to be comfortable even sharing your emotions? Are there people that actually aren't safe to be sharing your emotions with? So what's the gauge in how we determine that? And so there's a number of different things that we can think about in regards to emotional boundaries. The first one is where do we feel it in our body? And for those of you who are very logical thinkers, you might not even understand really what that means because maybe you're not in tune with that part of yourself where you're feeling your body's emotional, you're feeling your emotions in your body. But our bodies are actually communicating to us. Our bodies are telling us sometimes that, you know what? You actually need to share this with somebody that you trust, somebody that you feel safe with. And those people that you've maybe shared with that have been unsafe, there's an awkward feeling that can come with that. Sometimes we even feel it to our core where we just feel like, you know what, we're around that person and we just feel there's some kind of unsafe feeling in our body. This is one sign that we might need to set a boundary with a person. Um, and and so, so the body is one place that we can kind of tune into and go, okay, what am I feeling? What am I sensing here? And allowing that to be a bit of a guide. The next place is with our mind. So our thoughts. What are some of the negative beliefs that we have about emotional boundaries? Do we believe that emotions are, are wussy or as a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys are raised with feelings that or the belief that emotions make you weak you know you got to be strong you got to be tough so what does that mean even for when you're setting boundaries in your relationship what does that mean for when you're sharing your emotions to your to your partner so i know this is a lot of information um, but i think this is a good start to what emotional boundaries are and so we're going to continue looking at well what do we do so now what do we do now that we know kind of our values around boundaries then what do we do to move towards actually being clear about setting some of these boundaries not only with other people but with ourself have you ever had it where you feel emotionally dismissed, where you feel like maybe you can't be vulnerable anymore. I think we, we've had lots of experiences in our lives where maybe we had a person that we've shared with that, you know, dismissed us or made us feel like we couldn't share anymore. And so then what do we do? I think a lot of us will shut down and we think, well, you know what? I'm not going to be, I'm not going to share my feelings with that person anymore. And I think sometimes that's actually a healthy boundary. We're making a decision that, you know what, that person, they didn't make me feel super great when I shared. And so I'm going to think otherwise about sharing that with that other person. But then the next step would be, do you then have the courage to talk to that person about it? And that's kind of the difficult part. So we see lots of different things in regards to setting emotional boundaries. And I'm going to use social media as an example because it just seems like we see that a lot is we get the oversharers. We get those people who just overshare and they vent everything. I think a lot of us have done it when we just get sick and tired of not being heard. So we just going to post everything, right? So we need to set a boundary around that. What are your boundaries on that? The other one is somebody who just doesn't share anything. You know what? I'm completely shut down. I don't really care. I'm not going to put anything on there because I've been hurt. 
another boundary that that person set, right? Not necessarily, might not be healthy in some ways, but they've done that. Another thing that people do with emotions is they minimize them. You know, they're, the boundary that they're setting for their emotions is that, you know what, maybe my emotions don't matter so much. Um, or even somebody might minimize your emotions. We see a lot this a lot with grief. So some people, when you're dealing you're dealing with grief, what do you need? You need somebody to like stick with you, listen to you, and hear you out. You don't need somebody saying, "Well, you know what? Well, there's other fish in the sea," or, "Yeah, they died, but at least you had them for that time." That's minimization of our emotions, and so. Setting healthy boundaries around our emotions means really how, who are we going to share things with? Um, who are those people that we're actually going to open up to and, and share? And I think with our emotions, we have to think about who are those safe people that we can be vulnerable with. The last point that I want to make about emotional boundaries is really just re-emphasizing this quote by Brene Brown. Have people earned the right to hear your story? And I think that's something that we have to keep in mind when it comes to emotional boundaries. Have they earned the right to actually hear our story and how we're feeling? So how do people earn their right to hear our story? I think a lot of us really know deep down, but it might be hard to even verbalize or come out with the words. But I think what it comes down to is actually safety and trust. Do I feel safe enough to share my story with this person without them shutting me down or minimizing? Am I, do I feel safe even in my own emotions? Do I fa feel safe to feel? Some people might feel unsafe to actually deal with their emotions because they have so much going on in their life. And that's where we really need to uh, be careful because those, if you're one of those people who hasn't felt safe to even feel things, because you've maybe experienced trauma or had really difficult experiences in your life, those are actually, if you actually felt everything, it would be super overwhelming. So learning about, well, what does it mean for me to start even accessing some of those emotions that I'm feeling and learning how to process through some of those emotions. So safety and trust. Do I trust other people and do I feel safe even sharing what I'm what I'm going to share sharing my emotions?